let your I mean, F shoes up. And I'm like, oh, he's cussing. He's a little serious. I'm like, I'm like. But in the U.S., you can be 11 years old and they're talking about you. You're the next LeBron. You're the next Michael Jordan. For instance, look at LaMelo Ball, right? Like, we've been hearing about him since he was in the ninth grade. You know, everyone is interested in him. He has three or four million followers um, just because of his basketball talent. It's a business, probably at the age of 10, you know what I mean? I like two rookies. Um, obviously, at first, uh, I, I was in love with John Moran. You know, he brings a, a, a type of electricity to the building on the court. And then, uh, obviously, when, when Zion got healthy, coming off an injury and coming off a slow start for a rookie season, could have been easy for him to kind of derail, be down on himself, you know, look for an excuse on why my rookie season isn't how he expected it to be. But I think uh, he's definitely, uh, you know, met the expectations if not exceeded them. Uh, so I was about 16 years old, 15 years old, and. Um, you know, I thought I was just the best player in the world, you know. <laughs> uh, I got invited to the Michael Jordan camp. So at night, Jordan would uh, play 5-on-5 five five against the college guys. I did really good. Uh, my team, I won the first two games, I'm scoring a lot of points. Uh, Michael Jordan, he chose to guard me, I guess because I was the youngest guy there. And he was like, okay. So I started like talking trash, you know. I'm 15, right? So I'm just like, bro, you can't guard me. You're old. Don't come over here and guard me, go guard him. Like, why did I do that? He, he just made everybody leave in the gym. It was like, hey, everybody, you know, night's over. Sorry, see you guys in the morning for, for breakfast and uh, we'll do drills and stuff in the morning. And I'm like, okay, so I'm on the side, you know, I'm kind of un unlacing my shoes. I'm like, okay, well, I guess it's over, whatever. I made him mad. I actually thought that I made him mad to where he didn't want to play no more and it's over, you know, this young guy trying to show me up at my camp in front of my. Uh, campers. He said, young fella, what you doing? I said, he said it was over. He said, nah, it's over for the fans to watch, but uh, you know, these games ain't over. We know we're about to continue playing, you know, lace your MF shoes up. And I'm like, oh, he's cussing. <laughs> he's a little serious. I'm like, I'm like, all right, okay. So I lace him up. I said, let's go. Come on. I'm 15. I don't care. We play all night. And uh, from, from that point on, it was pretty much uh, you know, the video you can get. He was just, you know, pretty much schooling me, talking stuff, and, uh, you know, kind of letting me know that uh, my work wasn't done. You know, you got to keep working, you know. I'm 45, 46 years old. I'm still blessing you to tell them, you know, like it's nothing. So, pretty much a humbling experience, but uh, it was a good one. So, that's pretty much how it went. <laughs> okay. All right, um, I would say point guard Magic Johnson. That's part of the reason why I wear 32. I thought the way he played the game is kind of how the game is played today. You know, he played fast, up and down, you know, his ball is passing, everyone is touching it. Of how the game is played today, he played like that in the 80s. Number two, uh, my two guards are obviously Michael Jordan. I think uh, he's the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Small four would be LeBron James. I think uh, he's a mixture of Magic and Mike as far as uh, his athleticism. Been a tall point guard who's a pass first guy. My power forward goes to Tim Duncan. Uh, he's a silent assassin. You know, he doesn't say much. Uh, he's not the most exciting guy to watch play, but at the end of the night, you look at the stat sheet 20 and 15. And then with centers, it's kind of tough, man, because uh, I grew up like Shaquille O'Neal, right? Most dominant player or whatnot. But if I had a knock on Shaquille O'Neal, it would probably be a free throw shooting. It's like if I had the top five and I'm trying to win a game, I don't know if I can keep him on the court because what if they just start fouling him and he misses free throws, right? I think I would pick Will Chamberlain. He scored 100 points in a game. I mean, if you look at his numbers, he averaged 50 points and like 20-something rebounds. And so uh, I would say uh, Will Chamberlain would be my, uh, my center.